Hi, this is Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. So we are on part three of our challenge of seeking his face. So again, like we've been doing in the past, we're going to go through each of the um, the scripture first and then we're going to go to the concept. So, But I want to remind you of the other parts of the challenge. And so let's review just really quickly what the three parts of the challenge actually are. So you may have seen four videos as of, as of yet, but you saw introduction, two ch parts of the challenge. This is the third part. And then tomorrow I'm going to do a conclusion and kind of sum everything up. So for today, let's review. We've already talked about the introduction of why I even started this challenge. So I hope you enjoy video one part one though of the actual challenge was the question how do you know him and part two was can you worship him and today we're at part three and it is do you value him so and then lastly like I said we're gonna have a conclusion so let's get into this um, idea of do you value him the scripture I'm gonna use is references is Psalm 24 and 4 and it says he who has clean hands and a pure heart has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully before that is asking who can stand in the presence of the Lord like who can abide in in his in his holy presence presence and then it's like he who has clean hands and a pure heart okay so they're talking about the sincerity of the person who is going into really have communion with the Lord who are, is going to stand in the presence of God who is going to uplift the name of the Lord and demonstrate that that um, that relationship that they have with the Lord that person needs to have clean hands and a pure heart and as I th meditate on this part of the challenge really again the challenge for myself was to say okay wait wait a minute now um, have I really valued God for who he is or have I valued him for what he's done and I you know I, there's a saying that old saying from the south that says this person used to throw a rock and hide their hand right and so basically the person was like cowardly or, or shame-faced in the bad things that they did so they never want to be accountable for their bad behavior but they were always doing bad behavior they throw a rock and then they hide their hand and I kind of felt like convicted in the similar way when I got to this part of the challenge and so I'm going to share the challenge with you is that when I read particularly like this scripture it's like who can who can sit in the presence of the Lord or who can be in his company who can be um, noticed or, or identified as a worshiper of God, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. Okay, so what's happening then if our hands are not clean and our heart is not pure, right? What's happening then if we are not even honest about the the, the earnestness of our relationship? And and I thought about how many years, uh, years upon years, I listened to people um, proclaim that they love the Lord, but their reason for loving the Lord only had to do with the benefit that they perceived it brought to them. And if they were having a difficult time or if they were experiencing hardship, then then their, their proclamations of love for God was, was not the same as it was when they were not having a hard time right and so well, I just love the Lord because he lo first loved me that's good to love him because he first loved me because the scripture says that that we will love him because he first loved us but what it, what else do you love about him other than the fact that he loves you do you really sincerely value God for God, just the creator of the universe, just the the Alpha and Omega, just the I am, just who he is in solitude to what he does for you. In other words, is your heart pure and are your hands clean? Or are you guilty um, of being a person who really says that you value God, but really there is no sincerity of value in, in it? And I want to remind you that this is not to say that the things that we think are good about God or we say are good about God and the things that he does for us are not good. Clearly they're good because he's doing them. So the, he's good. So he doesn't do anything that's not good. So he's doing good things for us. So it ha he has to be good and those things have to be good for us. But if they're always our focus and always our intention, but we're saying that we love them. If we were that way in relationship, it really wouldn't play out quite well, right? If we were that way with other people, it wouldn't play out quite well. I, no, I really, really love you, husband. I really, really love you, wife. And so if you could do 10 more things for me, I know I really, really love you. I mean, I really love how you do this and how you do this and how you do this and how you do this. And it's not just about my love language. The only thing I really love about you is all the things that you do. <laughs> I don't really know you. And so my value for you is predicated on what you can do for me. 
And that's a problematic value, right? That's a problematic place in which we, we put God in, a, in an understanding of, God, I do value you as long as you continue to perform for me. But the problem is the scripture says that in this world, we're going to have troubles. And it's very clear that there are going to be some suffering in this world. And it's also very clear that because we love God doesn't mean we're going to be exempt from that suffering or those troubles. So then what happens when we're troubled and when we're suffering? Do we still have the same value for God? Or have we devalued him because of our circumstances? And I know some people will say, well, no, it's very basic, Erica. I can just proclaim that I truly love the Lord. And I want you to do that. But I want you to do that with clean hands and a pure heart. I want you to be able to say it with the sincerity of really knowing that you searched yourself and you really found yourself not to be with soiled hands uh huh, or a, or a contaminated heart in that you're trying to get the benefits of love. And not just loving with the with the purity that God has given you the ability to do. See, that's the trick to it is that he wants to know, do we value him? Because he's given us an opportunity to value beyond what a person can do for us, which means that he's given us the opportunity to value what he who he is without what he does for us. That's in us because he's put it in us. It's a gift that he's given to us. And yet the, the person that is most deserving of the personhood of God, who that is most deserving deserving of that gift, that personhood of God, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, those three personhoods in one are the last to benefit from the things that he's put into us. Shouldn't we offer back to him what he's given to us? Shouldn't we people be people who learn to value the, the creator of us before we start to value the creation or the creator before we start to value the works that led to creation? or the creator before we start to value the elements of our creation that we feel like need to be corrected or made right or be rectified. You see, there's a working that's going on and it's always going to be going on. But are you appreciative of the worker? Are you appreciative of the one who set this thing in motion? It's a challenge. The last part of our challenge technically, but it's a deep place that we need to really go back and recognize how do we or do we value God? Or is this all a part of a, a system that we've learned and practiced and we want to appreciate him, but we don't really know him because it can be corrected, right? We can get to a place in which we value him with sincerity. We can have clean hands and a pure heart. We can stand in the presence of God and know that our hands are clean, our heart is pure. We can be those people, but we are going to need to do some more work before we can achieve that goal. I hope that you're willing willing to do it. I know I'm ready to do it. I've been on this journey. It's been difficult. I have not been always proud of myself as I've gone through this challenge, but I'm going to say this to you. Despite the fact that I haven't always been proud of myself, one thing I do know is that I'm growing and that I'm never going back to the place I was before I was challenged in this way. If I have to ask myself again, am I sincerely worshiping God? If I have to ask myself again, do I really value God? If I have to ask myself again, am I in a place of sincerity? Am I being truthful and honest? Am I treating God like I would want to be treated? Am I treating God even like I would treat my siblings or my or my daughter or my family or a, a person that I that I loved and wanted to be in relationship with? If I'm treating God any less than any of those people or even myself, then it's problematic for me. And I hope that it's problematic for you. And so I want you to know that we're praying for you. We are praying that you are, yeah, deaf, healing, living, growing, all of those things true. But then also challenging, challenging, challenging your position to find a better position in which you really give God glory because he's worthy of the glory. He is worthy, not just his works, right? He is worthy, not just the manifestation of his goodness, just him by himself, solitary, with no other things connected, is worthy. Can you worship him like that? I hope you can. Join us again tomorrow for the ne next and last part of this devotional series. And until then,